Sick of someone parking their car on top of your grom? Lifts, pasta, and parking tickets? Throw out that grom, this one's for you. So, Husqvarna's Spark Villain 801 has now been revealed in the bike's full glory, showing us the direction the company is going and begging the question, is the new bike better than the old Spark Pillin 701? On the looks front, I'm not sure, but as far as loadouts, the new 801 does look like a slam dunk over the old 701 in every way that matters. Well, almost every way. So let's look at what we're getting, pricing, and some comparisons. The bikes themselves will arrive in Australia from July and in June in the US and UK. Certainly this extends out the Spark Pillin and we'd assume eventually the Vit Pillin model lines to a more fully fledged lineup, but gone is the short run tradition of just running single cylinders. Now KTM and Husqvarna both still offer a 690cc single, so this was very much a choice. Avoiding supermoto overlap was probably part of the plan here. The new Spark Pillin 801 sits between the entry level 401 and the full adventure Norton 901. Could we argue perhaps a little less scrambler orientated than the 401? With the choice to run cast alloy wheels instead of spoked, hard to say on that one. At a glance I'd assume so, but I think the overall package will win out here and make this very much a scrambler. We've also seen pricing announced for limited markets, namely $10,899 in the US and £10,499 in the UK. For comparison, the 790 Duke, just the regular version, is $9,499 and £7,999 in the UK, although that second figure does seem a little bit low. The 890 Duke is $11,299 in the US and the 890 Duke GP is £9,699 in the UK which is very similar to that base model and somewhat more surprisingly actually undercuts the new 801. This does suggest Husqvarna are delivering this model more as a drastically different styling option to the many KTM Duke offerings rather than as a bargain option. I tend to like Husqvarna styling far more than KTM which is a bit futuristic for me so I can't complain there. As far as the Spark Pillin 801 itself, we're seeing the 799cc parallel twin engine, which is produced in China, rolled out with 105 horsepower and 87 newton meters of torque, alongside three ride modes, street, rain, and sport, plus cornering ABS and traction control. Naturally, the bike is running ride by wire, standard easy shift, which is basically a bi directional quick shifter, a PASC slipper clutch, and TFT display. Now that is a nice power boost over the 2023 790 Duke, which was 95 horsepower, but it looks like the 2024 also pumps out 105, evening things out. Husqvarna reckon 15,000 km service intervals too, but I'd certainly be changing my own oil sooner than that personally, even if I left the proper services to the dealership at those intervals. You will need to fork out for the dynamic pack if you want cruise control, 5 level anti wheelie and 10 level motor slip regulation. And for some reason you also need this upgrade to be able to pick supermoto ABS mode in that street ride mode. Otherwise it's sports only. That pack also adds an additional dynamic ride mode here too, so a decent bunch of inclusions with the cruise control likely to be a big driving factor here. We also see standard smartphone connectivity, which also allows for turn-by-turn -turn navigation, calls and music, which is quite nice, as well as a hazard warning light toggle. The engine specifically weighs just 52 kilos without liquids, and the Spark Pillin 801 hits 181 kilos without fuel compared to the 159.5 kilo dry weight figure quoted for the old Spark Pillin 701. In real world terms, I reckon the weight difference is probably around that 15 kilo mark, including all the non-fuel liquids, which is a pretty hefty whack of weight. You're not going to shave that off with some carbon fibre and less cheeseburgers, although I'm guessing a full exhaust would be a decent hit. Of course, being fair, the twin was always going to push up the weight figure over a single, and power is up 30 horsepower and 10 newton meters of torque, and should be a far nicer power plant to live with than the single. Which was bonkers for a single for sure, but probably a little more bonkers than every rider would want as an everyday buy. Plus, the 790 and 890 Dukes are undoubtedly scalpels in the handling department, which may not quite match up to the sheer flickability and lightness of the old 701, but they're no slouch either. I'm guessing the new 801 will be fairly similar to the 890 Duke I tested a few years ago honestly and I'm interested to see just how similar. We're also seeing a good suspension loadout, WP 43mm forks, rebound and compression adjustable in separate legs, WP monoshock with preload and rebound adjustment too, 
not fully adjustable but still a fairly formidable system that actually mirrors what's run on the little spark pillin 401 and the base 790 and 890s from memory. Then there's the chromium molly denim steel frame, cast aluminium subframe containing the airbox and aluminium open lattice die cast swing arm plus forged triples and WP suspension damper. The bar mounts can even be reversed to move the handlebars 7mm and foot controls are switchable to race shift with no extra parts needed. Add an 820mm seat height and 14 litre fuel tank which bumps total bike weight up to 190 kilos or so and you should have a reasonably inviting machine for a mid capacity naked. There's a bit of extra weight there by the looks of it over the KTM 790s and even the 890s interestingly, which I guess we'll have to put down to styling. Not the lower seat height by any means, but also more normal once we reach these kind of engine capacities and actually the same figure as we saw on the new generation Spark Pillin 401. J. Juan provide the brakes, four piston front calipers on dual 300mm rotors, as well as a 240mm rear rotor and two piston caliper. You'd have to jump up to the 890 Duke R to get the Brembo calipers, so this loadout does make sense here, and there's cornering ABS, as I should have already mentioned, which again is nice to see. Now I guess some riders are asking if this is just a styling exercise, considering we've seen the 790, 890, and now 990 Duke variants for a number of years, with Husqvarna offering their own taste of the platforms with styling to match. That's probably a fair question in some ways, KTM own Husqvarna and certainly the similarities are huge, but style is a huge aspect of buying a motorcycle for the vast majority of people, and I know I much prefer the Husqvarna options, hence buying a Spark Pillin 401 over a 390 Duke. Now you could probably chuck those Pirelli MT60 RS tyres onto a 790 Duke and from what I can tell be in the ballpark of the new 801 from a riding perspective. However, you're not getting that unique styling or the little details which really bring this bike together. And while I definitely prefer the original 701 as far as styling, the Spark Pillin 801 is a pretty good looker as well. The scrambler angle is strong in this one too, I'd say. Adventure bikes are particularly popular these days, but for anyone who is only going to dabble in the dirt, a dual purpose tired naked bike is probably a much smarter proposition, especially in a form like this. We're talking good overall comfort, not overly big, not overly heavy like adventure bikes tend towards, also not demanding a steeper price of entry, particularly compared to say the Norden 901. Sportier handling for sure, and obviously the engine is tuned for a bit more bite than the ADV versions, not as good for touring of course, but a better daily commuter for sure. Nice high quality suspension, a good electronics package, there's lots to love on this machine. But let me know what you think, leave a comment, hit like or sub, it really helps the channel and as always stay safe out there.